In this video, we're going to take a look at at least the introduction to the quantum model of the atom. So this might blow your mind a little bit and uh, gets a little bit theoretical, but uh, bear with me because um, it's pretty neat stuff. So um, we last sort of left off or where we've left off with our atomic model is with the Bohr model. And so if you remember, it's sort of describing that we've got this positively charged nucleus and we have these electrons that are orbiting around in a very specific path. So it's fairly one dimensional. Now, a big, big problem with this is that electrons aren't really particles that uh, can be restricted to a one dimensional circular orbit. Uh, they Electrons can act as both waves and particles. And so what that means really, and what you sort of need to take away from this, is that electrons exist in three-dimensional space. So we need to get away from thinking about our atomic model in a one-dimensional space and move to three dimensionals. Um, what's also kind of challenging here is that Bohr's model only really works for hydrogen. Um, and that's because it has one electron and it's fairly easily um, explains a one electron system. But when you have an atom with more than one electron, Bohr's atomic model no longer fits. Um, and that's because electrons are actually really, really hard to find. So what do I mean by this? Well, um, after sort of Bohr's model and in terms of the history, uh, just sort of developing it, uh, Heisenberg kind of came along. And um, there, were, there were many sort of studies with electrons and looking at this wave-particle duality of electrons. And he came up with his uncertainty principle. And his uncertainty principle says that we can't predict the exact, with exact certainty the precise location of an electron. So we can't predict its path or its trajectory. We can, however, predict the probability of an electron being in a particular space. So to kind of put this maybe in a context, if you were looking for me in the school and you're like, okay, I know Dr. Johnson is definitely in the school. She is probably on the first floor either in the science office or in one of those first floor labs. But I can't say with any certainty exactly where she is at any point in time. Okay, so that's kind of what the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is getting at. It's like we can say with good probability where the electron's going to be, but we can't ever um, exactly pinpoint it to its precise location. So that kind of begs the question then, where are the electrons and what is this probability and how does this fit with our atomic model? Um, this is where Erwin Schrodinger came in. So this is um, early 1900s, so 1926. And he's come up with the quantum model of the atom from all of this evidence and putting all of these pieces together. And so the quantum model says that electrons still do have definite energy levels. So we do have like n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, and so on. Um, but because electrons have wavelength properties, they don't have a prescribed trajectory. So they are no longer moving in these one-dimensional orbits. Instead, they are moving, and what he calls it as, a pulsating wave around the nucleus. Um, so that's kind of heavy, right? Um, what he did, he was, he was a mathematician. So he actually created a mathematical model for the distribution of electrons in an atom. So he has a wave equation that describes where the electrons, the probability of finding those electrons in various places within an atom. Okay, so that being said, we need a term called orbitals. So we are no longer talking orbits, but we are talking orbitals. So what is an orbital? Well, it is the location of the probability of finding an electron at a particular point in an atom. And so Schrodinger's equation uh, was, it's, it's a wave equation. 
and it basically describes what the probabilities are of finding those electrons. Okay, and the result of that is an orbital. Now, because it's a wave equation, orbitals come in many different shapes and sizes, and the shapes and sizes get bigger and crazier as we move further away from the nucleus. One thing I want you to keep in mind as we kind of go through our learning of the quantum model is that only two electrons can fit into each orbital. So this is different from our, you know, fitting two electrons in one orbit, eight electrons in the next orbit, eight, eight and then 18, and so on. Instead, only two electrons fit in each orbital. Okay, really important to keep in mind. All right, so how does this change your atomic model? Well, um, one of the really big key differences between the Bohr model and the quantum model of the atom is that instead of just singular main energy levels now, we have within each main energy level, we have sublevels, which are made up of these orbitals. So uh, for the first um, energy level, because we have only two electrons there, we have one type of orbital that fits those two electrons. Remember, two electrons per orbital. At the n equals two level, we have two sublevels. We've got the, this that's called 2s and 2p. Um, because we can fit eight electrons here, we have four of these orbitals. All right, at n equals three, we're splitting now into three sublevels. So we've got S, P, and D here. Um, these are just our, our like names for the different types of orbitals, and we're gonna look at them in a little bit more detail. But we can fit 18 electrons at this main energy level. So we have nine different orbitals, each fitting two electrons, and so on and so forth. So essentially now we're taking main energy levels and we're divvying them up now into sublevels as well. And those sublevels are consisting of various types of orbitals, um, and the number of orbitals found in each main energy level is going to differ depending on what energy level we are at. Okay, that being said, let's look at our main energy levels and look at these orbitals in a little bit more detail. So at n equals one, um, this is our first main energy level. So that's our first main energy level in our Bohr atomic model. We know that two electrons go in this main energy level. Um, at this level, we have only one type of orbital, uh, one specific sublevel, and it's called an S-type orbital. Um, I think it's called S-type because it's spherical in shape, but... Uh, don't quote me on that because I'm not quite sure if that's why they call it. It's just the way I remember it. Uh, so the orbital is a spherical shape here, which looks really similar, right, to that orbit going around. But instead of the electron going around just the outside of the shape, the electron really can be anywhere within this sphere, this three-dimensional sphere. Because we're at n equals one, we often refer to this as our 1s orbital. Okay, so that's at our first energy level. Our second energy level has two different types of orbitals, so two different types of sublevels. The first is there is another s. It's bigger than the 1s orbital because it's further away from the nucleus, but it still has that spherical shape. So we'll, if we're talking about it at n equals 2, refer to that as the 2s orbital. Uh, the other type of sublevel or type of orbital we see at n equals 2 are called p-type orbitals. And there are three different ones, and these are based on the orientation. So the general shape is it looks like a dumbbell, or it looks like, like a little barbell. There are two lobes to this particular shape. Uh, so if our nucleus is here, the electron can be anywhere within either lobe of this p orbital, which is a little bit mind-blowing in terms of thinking about where the electron actually is sitting. Um, the three different types here, they all have the same energy. So 
just kind of keep that in mind. Um, but they differ in orientation around the nucleus itself. So one lies along the x-axis. We call this our px orbital. One lies along our z-axis. We call that the pz. And then one longs, lies along the y-axis. We call that py. Okay. Um, so the x, y, y, and z are just denoting the orientation around a three-dimensional plane. These are all referred to as 2p orbitals. So we'd say the 2px or the 2py or the 2pz orbital. Um, at n equals 2, eight electrons go in here, so it makes sense that we have four types of orbitals. Each one fits two electrons. Okay, building from there, at n equals 3, 18 electrons can fit in this main energy level. And so we have nine different types of orbitals found at this main energy level. We have the s, which is only one type. We would call this our 3s orbital. We have our three types of p orbitals. These are our three p orbitals. We'd say px, py, pz. And then the new type of orbital found at this energy level is called a d type orbital or we refer to these as the three Ds. You can see the complexity of the shapes here. They are very, very weird. You do not need to know the shapes. You just need to know that there are five different ones. Um, each one can fit two electrons, so we can fit 10 electrons total in all of the 3D orbitals. Okay, it gets even weirder when we go to N equals four or N equals five. Um, these ones can fit Let's see, we've got 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So 30, 32 electrons can go in either of these main energy levels. Um, the s orbital, again, has the same shape, just be bigger because we're further from the nucleus. So it's referred to as the 4s or the 4 or the 5s um, orbital, depending on what energy level we're at. We have the three orientations of p's. So those are our 4px, 4py, 4pz, or same with the 5. Uh, D orbitals, we have five different orientations. So these are our 4d orbitals. And then the f is even more complex. You can see like the shapes get weirder and weirder as we get further and further from the nucleus. And um, there are seven different ones here. So this can fit up to 14 electrons in f's. And we refer to those as the 4Fs or the 5Fs. You don't need to know the shapes of either the Ds or the Fs. You only need to be able to describe shapes of S and P orbitals. All right, so we talked a lot about orbitals. How does this all fit together in an atomic model? Well, if we have our nucleus here, just kind of building up our first two main energy levels, um, our 1s orbital surrounds our nucleus and kind of has our, our spherical shape around there. Our 2s orbital also surrounds our nucleus, but it's much bigger than the 1s orbital. Okay, And then our 2p orbitals all kind of sit around the nucleus as well, fitting... Um, sort of around the same kind of size as our 2s orbital. So you could have electrons, like we could have two in here somewhere, and then we can have two in the 2s somewhere, we could have two in the 2p somewhere, uh, and the other 2ps. And like, we don't know where they are, we just know that this is a probability of finding the electrons there. So that is it for this video. Um, a little bit theoretical. There is a really great sort of uh, simulation in the next task within this lesson. So make sure you take a look at that. Um, and let's move on.